Well, we made it to our bed chin. Check it out. Thanks to the wonderful people at the WFP, we landed this morning and we've been here for quite a few hours. <laughs> yeah, I bet she has a complete different feeling to it than the capital. Um, I don't know if you can tell from just looking, but uh, to me it feels very different and the people seem different. Uh, we're about, um, what I figured from looking at the map, about 90 miles from the, from the border with Sudan. And the camps are uh, some to the north, some to the south. We're going to start hopefully tomorrow uh, going up to one of the camps in the north. We are in the process of trying to get a car right now. And uh, we have uh, at least a couple of options. And what we're having a little more trouble with is finding a translator that can translate from uh, Arabic to English. They're very creative with transportation here. Uh, they have all types of carts, uh, little motorcycles that they, that they turn into three-wheel cars. Uh, donkeys are a big uh, form of transportation and of moving product around. Uh, in some of the areas of the city, you see pretty much traffic jams of donkeys uh, moving around. And the, they are very good at uh, directing them with a stick. And uh, I can see sometimes one lady moving up to, uh, well, I would say, six or seven donkeys at a time and, and loaded with a different type of material sometimes. My name is uh, Jean-Marie Garelli, I'm the, the Senior Technical Coordinator of uh, UNHCR based in uh, Abiche, Eastern Chad. Very good. And how long have you been here? Uh, arrived this, this time I arrived in February when I was here, there last year uh, in August during the emergency. I would say the, the first, uh, first influx happened in the uh, uh, second, second semester of 2003 and then more in early 2004. Uh, the refugee cross the border uh, from Darfur and they, uh, they basically stay all along the border uh, living with, with, uh, with Chadian, in Chadian villages and then when we, we arrived, I think the first mission was, was uh, end of 2004 and then we arrived to start the operation here and on this basis we were called by the, the Chadian government to assist them in this, in this crisis. And uh, how many refugees are in Chad right now? Okay, in, uh, in, in the camps you have, uh, according to the last census, you have uh, 198,000 in the camps uh, with another estimated 29,000 uh, who are not in the camps, who remain other at the border, who remain in, in some villages and who did not want to come to the camp. Uh, you have to take into account that you have an increase of about a third of a population in the, all the area. Uh, in an area where, which is characterized by scarcity of resources, environmental resources, be uh, wood, water. So if you increase the population by a third uh, as general, and in some places you can see that the, the population have increased by 113%. So obviously this has an impact. What are the biggest challenges as far as resources right now in the camps? What are okay, I would say two, two of them. The first uh, is water. Uh, the availability of underground water is rather limited uh, and then when you have to pump water uh, for 20,000 people in, in one location you really have to make sure that there is enough water. The second challenge I would say is the environment, uh, the impact on the environment, in particular the, the, um, the firewood. Uh, refugees that need some firewood to, to cook uh, and of course they go and, and take the firewood, it's dead wood only, but there's not, that, uh, there's not enough firewood uh, for everybody in this area. Over in the United States, a lot of young people are very involved on the Darfur issue, and they, they want to know what, about the young people, what, what, what are they going through? Uh, you know, what, what are some of their challenges? Uh, mm -hmm. Do they have schools? Uh, do, do they have anything of a regular life, uh, a regular childhood? 
Well, you know, it depends what you call the yeah. uh, regular childhood. I mean, they do have schools. I mean, all, all, the, all the children, children have, in the camps have access to primary school, mm -hmm. uh, which um, sometimes they hadn't when they were in, in, in Darfur. The, the, I would say in terms of, of uh, uh, the, the issue is more for, for the teenager in terms of uh, occupational activity because that's, there's not much to do uh, in a refugee camp, even I mean, in, Eastern, in Eastern Chad. Um, from uh, your standpoint, or from the UNHCR standpoint, uh, what would you want the public in general to know about the crisis? What do you think is important for them? Well, it's imp I think it's important for them to know that there, there's still uh, 200,000 more 200,000 people which are not, uh, which are living in, a, in another country uh, as a refugee uh, in a very, very poor area which has made a lot of sacrifice to, to welcome those, those, uh, those refugees which I think will need support. Mm -hmm. uh, both the refugee but also the area will need the, support. The side. Yeah, Chad inside. will need support to, to, uh, to keep on bearing this, this weight.